Hey, this is Greg from Lipstick Generation. Just wanted to drop in briefly before the episode to let you know that this one is kind of a shit show. We were ostensibly talking about RE Reveal, an REM cover album produced by friend of the show, Victor Kraus, aka James Gameboy. Unfortunately, we recorded this episode the same weekend that Sonic the Hedgehog came out, and we just got too horny to concentrate. There was too much hog talk to edit around, so the episode is not unlike the famous emeralds from the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise. Pure chaos. I would recommend that you listen to the album, though. It's good. It's called RE Reveal. It's by James Gameboy. James Gameboy and Bandcamp. I'm Greg. I like that album. Uh, anyway, let's start the show. Uh, I'm Greg. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and... <laughs> Three, two, one. Hi, I'm Greg. I'm the lead singer for Lipstick Generation. And I'm Greg, the bassist and or guitarist. Wait, you're Greg? What? Sorry. Uh, I'm Steve. <laughs> Sorry, we may, we may have melted my... <laughs> we may have melted my brain immediately before we started recording, so uh, that's pretty great. Is that a badger, Gavin? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been introduced yet. I can't talk. <laughs> And welcome to the Lifted Panel. Today on the Lifted Panel, we are done looking at Sonic the Hedgehog porn and are ready to talk about... <laughs> Is anyone ever really done looking at poorly drawn... I'm going to say Sonic the Hedgehog erotica, because there's very rarely any actual nudity. Just lots of <laughs> distended, distended bellies. Anyway, so we're done with that, and we are here to talk about the work of an artist on one of our episodes. We did the, the Salvo episode where we had the members of Salvo confront our ranking. But this is the first time on the Lipstick panel, unless I upload another episode before this one, where we have the artists themselves talking about their work and ranking it alongside the panel. And who is that artist? It's a guy who's on our show all the time anyway. Victor Kraus, regular panelist, but this is the first time we're critiquing his art on the show. He has the balls of steel to dare to allow us to discuss his album, Re-Reveal, a cover of the R.E.M. album, Reveal, which, as we know, was loved by all the panelists last time on the show. <laughs> yeah. So, so Victor, welcome to the show. James Game Boy, ranking his own album. How you doing, Victor? Uh... When I left here last, I was just a boy, and I have returned a man, was what you told me to say at the end of the reveal episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, now, you, there you go. Are you just a boy, or are you just a boy? <laughs> That was a Kiss yeah. reference, because hey, if you listen to our podcast, uh, hi Kiss fans, we're doing an R.E.M. cover album, hope you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember! Speaking of people who are still here from Kiss-related episodes, we've got Gavin Wallace Aylesworth from Bet Knee joining us back on the program. Thank you, Gavin. Resident Victor expert, Gavin Wallace Aylesworth. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I was told we were revisiting the Hotter Than Hell album, but I, I guess I'll, I'll talk about this uh, R.E.M. cover. And hey, speaking of people who are... You didn't notice that we were doing a different album than Hotter Than Hell after <laughs> listening to the album that we're reviewing? I'm more shocked that uh, the rankings I sent in were just Hotter Than Hell songs, and Greg somehow factored that into... <laughs> the rank well, Hotter Than Hell songs and Billy Corgan's nipples. What's your favorite song from Hotter Than Hell, uh, Victor? Um, well, it's tough not to go with the title track. <laughs> well, what's your second favorite one then? Um, uh, Colder Than Heaven's pretty good. <laughs> hey, speaking of people who know a lot of things, we've got uh, Julia Townsend returning back on the show, uh, an expert in all things Victor Krause. Welcome back, Julia. I just wanted to say I'm going to break up with him so I can fuck Sonic the Hedgehog later. <laughs> <laughs> A wise decision. <laughs> I'm so horny for that hedgehog. <laughs> please edit this, and I'll mention of of the or like like please. Uh, I, I want that to be its own non sequitur. So I mean, cut I've out got all the... the hedgehog board stuff before that, and just I want to bang Sonic the Hedgehog. That's amazing. I've got the gross sex drop category, so probably gonna oh. put I'm so horny for that hedgehog in there. Well, yes. 
he he did ask me on a date for my birthday. I got an email from Sonic the Hedgehog saying he wanted to take me out yeah. on a date. <laughs> and I was like, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's up, bro? Was... Uh, no, honestly, actually, you could probably show her a pretty good time. I mean, I was at work. <laughs> <laughs> Fastest <laughs> date ever. Fucked by a hedgehog. So for people who don't the know what... The little known follow-up to uh, <laughs> Touched by an Angel and you know, <laughs> Sonic Boom. <laughs> so for people who don't know what this episode is about, uh, Victor uh, goes by the artist named James Game Boy on uh, Bandcamp and other streaming services. And for one of his album projects, he covered the entirety of the R.E.M. album Reveal, but offered drastically different arrangements than the original album. And so we decided, hey, let's rank Victor's version of Reveal called Re-Reveal. Typically on the show, we go around the panel and talk about our history with the uh, the band, uh, the artist, and the album. I'll go ahead and go first. So, <laughs> my first knowledge of Victor was through the podcast Ultima Final Fantasy, where I listened to his Patreon episode and I said, hold on, this guy is more charismatic than the hosts of this show. I should get him as a panelist on my show because he seems pretty charming. And so I reached out to Victor, and he said, yeah, sure, I'll be on your podcast. And he proceeded to make his debut appearance on the Jim Steinman Bad for Good episode. Immediately. <laughs> Which one? Uh, part three. <laughs> <laughs> Parts three through five. Parts three through five. Immediately um, making me love and respect this man. And uh, then I listened to his music and immediately stopped loving and respecting this man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Harsh but fair. Uh, but actually, joking aside, I thought, yeah, he's got he's got some cool music. So I, you know, I skimmed around on the band camp, checked out some of his releases, and then he asked me to listen to his mixes of Re Reveal, and offer him mix feedback. And so I listened to it and A beat it with the original REM album just to get a get a feel for it because I wasn't super familiar with it, and thought, wow, this is a really Clever, well-done album. I like that the arrangements are different than the original album, but the, the melody and the hooks weren't lost in the process. Because oftentimes when someone takes a song and rearranges it, uh, they lose like the main melodic hooks of the material, and it just becomes something completely different. This was a matter of the songs developing a new identity, but still painting that strong sense of melody. And so I was thoroughly impressed by it. And, uh, like, the vocals uh, impressed me, the general production impressed me. Like, it struck me as a very clever, well-done album that I liked a lot. And, um, and I liked the original album, too. And so I was very surprised when we did the reveal episode how much everyone disliked that album. <laughs> um, but I enjoy this album quite a bit, and I think it shows the extreme potential that Victor has as a musician, where I think... On some of his other albums, um, some of the writing, I feel, isn't as poppy as uh, I prefer. And so when Victor is forced to, you know, work with someone else's pop hooks, it's just his sheer talent as a musician shines. Where he's a, he's a great singer, has a great sense for arrangement. And I think that with his other stuff, where his originals, I think he gets... Uh, a little bit bogged down by just, like, wanting to be as creative as possible with the writing. And I, in the same way that, like, sometimes, like, a prog musician is like, I can make this more complicated, but then it's less good. Uh, I think his other stuff is still very good, but I think this sort of is, like, the sweet spot of uh, Victor's performances. And I think if he writes more R.E.M.-esque songs, he is a force to be reckoned with in the music industry. Uh, but yeah, this is a, this. Uh, it's a really great album, and uh, it's it's a high recommend to basically anybody uh, with reasonable diversity in their taste. Like if you just like a good, catchy pop album, this is fantastic. So thumbs up from me. So let's see who wants to talk about Victor next. I, I I like the idea of all of us just like subtly throwing shade at Victor when we do our introductions. <laughs> I like it too. <laughs> this is my kink. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was hedgehogs. <laughs> this is my second kink. You can have more than one kink, Greg. <laughs> so, um, Victor, what's your experience with James Game Boy and this album? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, well, I first met James Game Boy <laughs> uh, a couple of years after college, and I was kind of just working a shitty job, and I was like, well, why am I not happy? <laughs> and then I realized it was because I wasn't a, a rock star of any kind. And then I was like, well, what do rock stars do to become rock stars? I guess they have to write songs. So I started doing that in 2015-ish. And then uh, in 2000, I want to say 17, was when the Are You Talking REM uh, Re Me podcast came out. And I started getting really into them. So I, I guess I jumped over a lot of like, I made a few albums. <laughs> And then started listening to R.E.M. and then got into this. But that's pretty much what happened. Uh, I, yeah, I, I've i never had to give my origin story before. So, <laughs> And then you were bitten uh, by the radioactive spider. Yeah, I was, I was bitten by a radioactive Game Boy. <laughs> so what made you decide, I need to cover this entire album, not just like the songs I really like from it, but the entire damn thing? <laughs> Well, so that that is actually something that came up on the reveal episode, which was I like this album a lot, but there are things about it that bother me. <laughs> and I was like, well, I feel like a lot of this material is really strong and it's kind of produced in a way that is both pretty like uh, sleepy which I'm not against, but I feel like these songs are stronger than their kind of 2001 era production would let on. And I, uh, I wanted to explore them more. And it's also, I found, uh, a lot easier to make an album when you don't have to write any of the songs and you're not responsible <laughs> for that section. <laughs> so even though it took me a long time to do, it was, I think, easier but maybe I would have to talk to me in August of 2019 to know if that's really true. <laughs> All right, well, let's shift gears to someone with uh, with a different amount of experience with Victor. Steve, what is your experience with Victor and his music <laughs> and this album? So I first met Victor when he was on Jim Steinman Part 3, or Jim Steinman's Bad for Good Part 3 on our podcast. And I was like, oh, shoot, James Game Boy, I love chiptunes. And then I went to his band camp and I listened to a couple songs. I was like, this isn't chiptunes at all. And <laughs> was generally disappointed. And then we did the reveal episode and I was like, I like R.E.M. And then I listened to reveal and was like, oh, no, this album is very bad. And so I've been <laughs> dreading this episode. Like, oh, no, I like Victor. He's super neat. But I'm going to have to, like, talk to him and be like, yeah, you did bad covers of bad songs. And then I listened to the album this week and was like, wait. Hold on. All of these are faster. He added drums to them. And there's like <laughs> even weird glitchy and chip tunes. Hold on. Did Victor fix this album? <laughs> and then I listened to it another time to do the rankings and like sort of kept it running in the background a little bit and was, you know, incredibly pleasantly surprised to have enjoyed this album. <laughs> <laughs> the highest of praise. Victor, <laughs> Subtle shade. He didn't think he thought you would suck, but turns out you were fine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Triumph. Speaking of people who thought this album would suck, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so I first met Victor on it was one of the episodes here. Uh was it was it Life's Rich Pageant or did we do a kiss one before that? I think it was, was life's. Was I think life's it was Life's Rich Pageant. Pageant. Was that yeah. okay? That was our first together. Um, but I think he was introduced to you through your um, Peter Chris M. Preg on One for All Part Two. Oh yes. yes, that's right. Yeah, and uh, then cut to uh, you know we did a couple episodes uh, together. Uh, then cut to uh, uh, my band playing in Portland, and we just finished and some uh, 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 wide-eyed. Uh, fuzzy man uh, <laughs> walks towards the stage and and uh, shouts at me that that he wishes to um, uh, mouthily 
<laughs> mouthily squeeze mine hedgehog <laughs> and uh i just kind of went oh okay it's an excited fan and i went you know uh backstage and and, and rested and then it, i got a text from one of my bandmates that oh hey you you hated the album that this guy loved on a podcast <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> Which is true. Uh, I really didn't like the REM uh, album <laughs> reveal, uh, which was a shame for me because I, you know, Fables of the Reconstruction is a great album. Life's Rich Pageant is a great album. Uh, Eponymous uh, is great. Um, the early stuff is is great. Uh, and so, you know, I was kind of, I, I, I like Steve, had been kind of, I wouldn't say dreading this episode, but wondering like, oh man, am I gonna am I gonna like it? Like, is it gonna, you know, ooh, what's it gonna be like? And then, uh, God damn it, this is a great album. Um, you know, I, 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 yeah, Victor did fix this album. Um, songs that I really like hated on the uh, the you know the original the REM version. Uh, I really love on 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 this, and I, I think it's uh, it's a good, good, good album made by my friend Victor. And I'm not just saying that because I'm not just saying that. <laughs> As a my side note, heart. Uh, we should definitely hang on to the phrase M "mouthily squeeze my hedgehog." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Makes it sound like you're just like going off while you're doing it, squeezing a hedgehog and be like, the "asshole." <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of people who uh are blowing victor <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, uh, currently <laughs> yes that's why i've been quiet for so long <laughs> <laughs> sorry it just i i had the joke why like, should i make it i'm like you know what the softball Go for the it. lipstick panel no, uh, for mature uh, listeners only, or really immature <laughs> listeners also. Wouldn't necessarily be softball. <laughs> oh. Hey yo, it's like medium soft. Yeah. <laughs> Man, if only the I jack off really loud drop was like out of hand. Oh. No, I jack off really loud. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like how it starts with no as if it someone challenged the fact that he does or does not. Just... <laughs> I think that might have been the context that he said it in. Yeah, that was... Yeah. Um, we were talking about, you know, stealthily, Jay, you know. Yeah, that was from our Frozen episode, which was pretty classy up until that point. <laughs> but anyway, Julia, uh, your history with, uh, with James Game Boy and this album in particular. So... I first met Victor in December of 2017, and then I first met James Game Boy in February of 2018. <laughs> I've never seen them in the same place at the same time, but there's nothing weird about that, in my opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've known I've known of Victor for a <laughs> long time and his music, uh, and this album. When it comes to the original, I also did not love it at first. But then, with his insistence that it was good, <laughs> I, gave it, <laughs> I gave it a few more listens, and I was like, you know, it's fine. Um, it's certainly, the highest of praise. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's an incredibly fine album. Uh, and when he was telling me that he was going to cover the whole thing in its entirety. I was like, okay, sure. Let's see what you got. And I also Show agree. Show me your that... moves. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a, a vast improvement on the original. Which might be sacrilegious because I'm actually a massive REM fan, but I think this is better than what they did. Your boyfriend is just better than REM. What can we say? I would not go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Your boyfriend is better than REM firing at low capacity. There we go. <laughs> He's better than REM on Quaaludes. <laughs> Victor trying his best is better than REM not giving a shit. <laughs> so, I'll take that. <laughs> good enough. So, uh... So much shade. <laughs> so, speaking of shade, um... 
there was a little bit of controversy about my rankings. That, yeah, uh, there was. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a preview screenshot of in the chat. So here's the thing. On previous episodes, I have said I judge based upon songwriting and not execution. So I just flew over my rankings from the previous reveal episode <laughs> and left them in the exact same place. But, uh, <laughs> but I thought about it some more and I decided my respect and love for Victor as a friend and artist overrides my commitment to the bit. <laughs> That's a lot of respect. I know. I really, I really respect the bit. Um, Basically, the only other person that he like was willing to give up on the bit for is his wife. Right. So, <laughs> so Victor, my wife, same level of respect, same level of sexual attraction. Um, and so I ended up redoing my ranking. So the email uh, title that I sent Steve is re re reveal reveal. Nice. Re 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 reveal reveal reveal. So uh, the the ranking that you saw and those numbers that, that we had in the chat are no longer relevant. So it's an entirely new bullshit ranking. Whoa! Oh, oh God! <laughs> it's it's a little bullshit. It's a little. Uh, <laughs> the number two uh, song is is bullshit, and I am so glad that I changed my ranking just for that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, let's let's get into the ranking of this album that. Everyone agrees is better than the original. But hey, speaking of songs that are not better than the original version, <laughs> uh -huh. coming in at the bottom of the list, we've got All the Way to Reno, parentheses, You're Gonna Be a Star, end parentheses. Fair end enough. Parentheses. So the original song wasn't that great. This is a version of the song that is less good than the not that great original. Mm-hmm. That's my comments. Any other comments on all the way to Reno? <laughs> You're gonna be a star before we move on. No, I I, I like uh, I, I like this arrangement. Um, I liked the original uh, a lot. In fact, where did I where did I put it? In the yeah um, yeah. I mean this uh, this is more m middle of the pack uh, uh, for me. I, I really like the, the, the shimmery chords at the beginning are gorgeous. Um, oh, and here is where I say that I really did not listen to the original album again. Uh, so I'm, I've only been listening to Victor's uh, versions Same lately. Same like as I, one should. Because why would yeah. you listen to that boring, boring album? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, actually, I'm actually fine with that album. I don't think it's as bad as everyone else thinks it is. Um, <laughs> well, you're wrong, Greg. Uh, yeah, Victor and I are on an island, love and reveal, being like, it's good. Why don't people get it? <laughs> um, but no, I, 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 you know, my, my, my notes on this song are the same as the notes on a lot of the other songs uh, on this album, which is that Victor's version has so much more atmosphere to it, uh, I think, than the original. And I like that. I'm an atmosphere kind of guy. <laughs> I think I oh oh sorry go ahead. I I don't know how much like uh production detail you want me to go into here, but this this one has kind of an interesting thing to it. Um I so when I did like the main early drafts that sort of ended up being like the early versions of all these songs, I did them in the order of the original album. So I did this one third even though it appears way later in the album. And I was originally going to do the exact same track listing, which a lot of the sequences ended up being the same. Like, this is after uh, I've Been High, which was after the lifting in the original album as well. Um, so I use the last, uh, like, kind of ringing out chord in I've Been High. I took that rendered audio and used it as a sample in All the Way to Reno. And those, oh. that's what's making those chords. Ah, very nice. Yeah, You're I mean... A clever, the, clever man. The production on this album is overall very impressive, where once again, you're taking these songs and, like, like giving them arrangements that allow them to shine in a different way, but still not losing the original melody, because most of the time when someone does a drastically different cover... It's 
it's almost just a different song at that point. Like when Toad the Wet Sprocket covered Rock and Roll All Night. It's just nice. basically a different song at that point. Um, and so the fact that you achieved that balance is honestly makes this one of the most impressive cover albums I've ever heard. Um, but not this song. This one's kind of boring. <laughs> <laughs> Greg and I both put this one at the very bottom. Really? That's yeah. That's fair enough. <laughs> I feel like of all the songs, this is this is the one that probably like. I don't know. Maybe wasn't made worse, but definitely wasn't substantially improved by Victor's arrangement. It's it's still got the like you know, uh, hit the drums Joey vibe going on. I feel like if it were a little more chill, it would be a decent vaporwave song. Um, but it's not quite there, and it's not energetic enough to be a rock song. And so it sort of lands in this middle ground where it's not satisfyingly anything. I think it's also, uh, this is just a song where, like, the more I listen to it, including the R.E.M. version, the less I like it. <laughs> it's just like, ah, oh, I just, I don't like basically anything that's happening here. So it's not Victor's fault. It's just I don't like the song. I've decided. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing about this one, this is one of the few where I did a draft of the song and then I was like, because my whole thing with this album was to sort of like i wanted it to stand very far apart from the original album so i didn't want to borrow anything more than like the basic structure and like chords and the first version of this song that i made was basically borrowing a lot of the country elements that are found in the original song and just kind of going that route and after i finished it i was kind of like well this is not that's not what this album is supposed to be. It's not supposed to really sound like the original one. So then I, I veered all the way backwards and was like, how far away from the original song can I get? So I put it in a different time signature and made it, uh, you know, airier and more atmospheric. So that was kind of the goal. And I also agree that it's, uh, it's worse. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I find it very sonically appealing. Ah. <laughs> I just came. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so Julie, you've been you've been quiet over in the corner, probably because uh, you've been coming over how much you love this song. It's uh, you gave it <laughs> nine points, so you rank this pretty high. Yeah, I like it. I really like the original version of this song a whole lot. Apparently. I, I'm alone in that one, too, which is fine. Uh, when it comes to this song, I think I had kind of the reverse effect, as maybe a few of you did, where I uh, I did not like it a whole bunch at first, and then the more times I listened to it, I started to like it a lot more. I think it kind of helps that um, I tend to draw when I'm listening to stuff, and I like the atmosphere of this song when I'm doing things when you're drawing it's pictures just, of sonic the hedgehog characters i'm drawing sonic m preg <laughs> <laughs> sonic what are you doing to peter chris <laughs> <laughs> actually yeah, as, we're, as we're approaching the sonic womb episode um i really hope sonic the hedgehog <laughs> makes an appearance in the next peter chris uh Oh, you know, he may have to. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have any other comments on uh, this composition before we move on? Nope, just draw your sonic mpreg to it. That's all I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, another thing, I guess, this goes along with my normal thing of not liking bridges. Uh, I was originally going to cut the bridge of this song, and... Then I was like, well, what if I do it as a guitar solo? And then I was like, you know, what if I just do it, but the opposite of how they did it, where it's kind of like the most energetic part of the song. And then I did the opposite, which does add to the sleepiness of it. But mm -hmm. I, 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 I did. I, I, I kept a bridge, you guys. <laughs> nice. Congrats. <laughs> and what I'll say before we move on is that I don't think there's a bad track on this album. Uh, so I would say this isn't bad, it's just I don't particularly care for the original song that much. I think just 
I th- I think just the lyrics. The more I think about them, the more I get annoyed by the concept. <laughs> um. So, but it's not. Uh, I would say it's a good melody, well performed, well produced. So I don't think this is a bad track. It's just because I'm not lyrics deaf, it annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the most lyrics deaf person I may have ever met. That's probably why you like this one so much. I cannot. I do not hear lyrics. I don't give a shit about them. <laughs> I mean, Victor's always said that he's lyrics deaf, but I suppose in this case, he actually had to like listen to lyrics to figure out what they were. Oh, that's maybe another thing I should have said or <laughs> up top. I um, didn't look up any like chord charts for this album. My only way to learn anything, including the lyrics, was I had to listen to the album. So there's probably a lot of lyrics on this album that are not accurate to what's on the original. Have you ever, like, done a comparison? Um, well, so the only one I looked up, uh, when we get to it, I'll say which one that was. And then I kind of just forgot to do a comparison. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe I'll do it today. Well, hey, next up on the list is a song that Steve and I both liked more than the rest of the panel. Yep. Uh, we've got She Just Wants to Be. Nets on the list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I gave this nine points. Steve gave it eight points. Victor, you gave it two. Why do you hate art? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you understand the brilliance of James Game Boy? <laughs> you know, even ja- the mighty James Game Boy has to fall. Uh, <laughs> so this is a song that I, on the original album, am not particularly fond of. And... It was kind of an inter- a weird process to have to record it because I didn't really enjoy singing the melodies on it. And <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I wanted it to be even shorter than it is. I think this is one of the few that's like either the same length or maybe a little longer than the original. And I had fun like producing it, but this this melody does not grab me at all but yeah i had the opposite experience i um i ranked this one pretty high because i think this is one of the catchiest melodies from the original album uh and like i liked the cool glitchy vocal stuff honestly the only reason i ranked it as low as i did is because i would have liked more drums (laughs) well this one does feature uh joey warnaker ah Um, okay (laughs) you how much did you yell at him to hit the drums because he's hitting a little (laughs) Well, you had to yell because he was so far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my thoughts uh, generally echo Steve's, um, including enjoying the echo. Um, yeah, just uh, I, I enjoy the melody quite a bit. I thought the production choices on it were excellent. And I thought it was one of the more engaging vocals on the album. Uh, and I do understand sometimes like putting forth extra effort into songs you're not into to help sell it to the audience. <laughs> Uh, there was a band I was in called Manpower, and there was a song in the set that I thought was absolute trash, and I really just hated with a burning rage and passion because I thought it was just a really shitty song. And because I hated the song so much, that was the one I performed the most on, so that the crowd could not (laughs) tell how little I thought of that material. (laughs) So, and the rest of the band thought I was really into that song, like, man, you just always, like are doing all these flips and stuff during that song and spins. I'm like, yeah, because I think it sucks. (laughs) Now, when you say doing flips and stuff, (laughs) you're not Uh, talking about you're doing backflips on stage, are you? No, not, uh, not backflips. Um, he's flipping the bird at at the, at the music sheet. (laughs) I, I, I I guess it's not flips. It's jumping and spinning. So not flips necessarily. Oh, jumping and spinning you flip your guitar up sometimes so that people can see the scream message on the back yeah so i mean i'll do i'll do that uh it's it's just i overperform to compensate for the fact that i didn't want to show my lack of enthusiasm for the song and so <laughs> this very excellent performance by victor i think might have some of that in there it's like i need to try really hard so people don't know i think this kind of sucks victor's just <laughs> guilty of gearing her up <laughs> all I, re- I remember <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, um, I, well, first off, you know, I did put this one at number 10, so I only gave it three points, but the general baseline of my enjoyment of this album, you know, everything is way, way, way above the pastichio barrier. Everything's way, <laughs> way, way above the B-Nips barrier. <laughs> you know, like this is, 
you know, so even though it's it's third from the bottom, I still really, really like it. My only notes that I took for this one was cool delay, my dude. I like. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Cool delay, my dude. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, so there is kind of a weird um, synthy thing that kind of vacillates between three notes in the verses. That's like a oh, wah, oh, wah, oh, wah. and that is sampled actually from my first draft of All the Way to Reno. Ah. Mm. So basically just yeah. All the Way to Reno was composed entirely of samples from other songs and every other song was composed of samples from All the Way to Reno, huh? Yes. All right. Well, kind of. <laughs> Wait, a little I bit. have an Inception sound in here somewhere. It's not that one. Oh, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Stupid RNG. Jazz is an accident. Waiting to happen. Yes. Waiting to have happened. One more try. There we go. Yay. Let's give I a love how we got the noise, but immediately covered it up. There we go. So, um, That's okay, I can go back and edit it in. There you go. So, Julia, what did you think of this one? Um, I actually like the original song. It's one thing, and... I I, I like this version of it also. I just find it production wise to be a little emptier sounding than the stuff I prefer on this album. So just didn't quite crack it for me. I don't know. This I do one, like the delay though. <laughs> this one's a good yeah, booty yeah. shaker. Makes me want to dance. <laughs> Dig it. <laughs> it is a booty shaker. It's true. <laughs> Well, hey, she Nets just wants on to the be list. shaking her booty, <laughs> right? <laughs> she just wants to be listening to a different song. Oh hey. shit! Oh. Yo, <laughs> hot takes. What a guy. Speaking of different songs, next up on the list is "Summer Turns to High." <laughs> yeah. Some great uh, Peter Gabriel esque production on this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bringing it back. I. Look, like the song was already pretty Peter Gabrielly, and you just Peter kept, kept it being Peter Gabrielly. Hey, Greg, someday we're gonna listen to some Peter Gabriel together, okay? <laughs> okay, and I'll be like, wow, this sounds just like James Game Boy. <laughs> James Gabriel Boy. <laughs> James Game Real. Yeah, there you go. I mean, look, this song is basically the sledgehammer of the album. <laughs> <laughs> she wants to be your sledgehammer. Yes. <laughs> I have the same birthday as Peter Gabriel, which was three days ago. Birthday, yeah. oh, Thank birthday. you. Uh, so all praise for Peter Gabriel applies to me as well. Right. That's true. <laughs> that is how Please bear works. this in mind. We are the same person. He this is the reason I'm a musician. That's that's true. This song is the, the Carpet Crawlers 99 of the album. <laughs> <laughs> in that the best thing Genesis did since uh, 1980. Mm, Four, you five? mean the best thing Genesis did? Period. No. Invisible touch. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, uh, summer turns to high. It sounds like Peter Gabriel, so I like it. <laughs> I really uh, did not like the original REM version, but because this it... sounds even more like Peter Gabriel, you love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was actually it was my number twelve on on the original. And on this, it's my number three. So I, uh, Whoa. you know, yeah, James, thank you for taking a thing I hated and making it good. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Well, that is a, that's a big turnaround because there was in the uh, pre, in the days before recording the reveal episode, there was a lot of uh, mention of Summer Turns to High as being Summer something. turns to sigh. Yeah. <laughs> the whole premise of just like the summer album being all about being sad. <laughs> Go outside, get some sunlight, Mike. Or just like <laughs> put on a Morrissey record. <laughs> some of those are pretty good. The early ones. <laughs> I'd wish he'd less to see. Yeah. Wow. Nowadays, I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> I put this one in the the middle. This particular one I put in the middle. I like 
The only real complaint I have about it is once the drums kick in, it gets to be really cool, but then they go back out and it goes to the ambient ambient thing again. I'm like, oh, no, I wanted to stay energetic. It should just stay energetic until the very end. Oh. Dynamics <laughs> are bullshit. I just want everything to be fast <laughs> punk or slow shoegaze. No, that's not true. Like, <laughs> like there, are, there, are, there are dynamics in it. I like, I like how it started off ambient and slow and then i wanted to get you know fast and energetic and you know not waver back and forth between the two you know dynamics you know need sort of a a, a point and a focus to them yeah but totally their dynamics agree. need a point and a focus to them yep. <laughs> i i just want to this this joke came to me and uh <laughs> I, I just can't not say it going back to the morrissey thing and he said less a see and then I, I just imagined an, an old Italian chef. I want to less a hear a more a see. And uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just been replaying in my head, and I just had to. Less a see. What's uh, that, a less a see? Timmy fell into the well. <laughs> less a hear a more a see. <laughs> so, Julia, you rank the second from the bottom. Why don't you like your boyfriend? Because <laughs> he's not a hedgehog. <sighs> Well, I was going to say the dynamics of this song are exactly the reason why it is where it is. Because I also like the part where it picks up and it starts moving and grooving. And I would have preferred to stay in that space after leaving the ambient zone rather than return to the ambient zone. Right. High five. I'd... Air <laughs> well, five. It sounds just like Victor and I are the only ones here who can appreciate quiet beauty. I enjoy it. <laughs> I, put, I put all the way to Reno at number four. <laughs> <laughs> None of you appreciate quiet beauty as much as I do. I would argue. This is number three, and I was listening to uh, Brian Eno ambient albums yesterday. <laughs> Music for airports, yeah. Um, I will say, you know, maybe it would have been a uh, structurally interesting thing to do to not um, kind of mirror the dynamics of the original, um, but I didn't. <laughs> um, also, uh, Gavin bringing up Brian Eno just now reminded me, I did use, um, uh, I downloaded the Oblique Strategies app. Oh, ah, yeah. oh, wonderful. And I used that quite a bit on when I was making this album. Now, I'm actually not familiar with that. Could you, uh, could you tell us for the audience at home and Greg, who doesn't know what that is? I read the Wikipedia page, so while you're telling them that, I'm going to go make some coffee because I'm fading a little. Okay, um, so the oblique strategies, and Gavin, you probably know this better than me, uh, so if I get anything wrong here, feel free to kick my ass. Um, I am listening. I, I will, uh, I'll, I'll jump in mercilessly and ridicule you. Okay, at some point in Brian Eno's producing career... In the 70s. He, in the 1970s, he um, made a large stack of cards that had what he calls the oblique strategies, but they are essentially uh, phrases or descriptors or uh, bits of direction that he would simply pull out at random and show to a band to make them change a performance in some way. Um, and they were sort of unpredictable ways to get different creative uh, like impulses out of people. And that's what I used them as. Can I get some examples? Yeah, let me just pull it up. Um, I just opened up to the chat again and there was hedgehogs. <laughs> <laughs> so many oh, hedgehogs. Speaking of that, I just sent one. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. Eno. Um, e Eno the hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, all right. So Eno the hedgehog. Um, okay. So... One here is question the heroic approach. Another is openly resist change. Trust in the you of now. Imagine the piece as a set of disconnected events. Are there sections? Consider transitions. Move towards the unimportant. Wow, that this sounds me. like a bunch of bullshit. I, I, I was waiting for you to say that. <laughs> 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 I will say it helped, though. I mean, oh Yo, yeah, I've used it before, and yeah, they're they're quite helpful. I think. I just <sighs> used a random generator generator to find one, and this one says, "Just carry on." 
My That's favorite so one is drink some water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, hey, if if that works for you, I guess. Cool. So, so what? what did you use for this track in particular? Then, what what Brian uh, Eno's you... strategy was for this song? Um, let me pull that up. Make the song better. Yeah, okay, there we one... go. Yeah. What would Peter have... Gabriel do? <laughs> <laughs> Just be good. Yeah. Simply be good already. What if the song was about Paul Stanley's dick and how this girl's gonna get some of his dick? <laughs> well then, now we're talking. Slip it in. <laughs> By Black Flag. <laughs> Listen to that album instead of reading Oblique Strategies. What were we on? <laughs> Summer Turns to High. Summer turns to oh high. my god, from nothing to more than nothing. Whoa. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> so Man, good. I'm so full of shit for not respecting that. <laughs> oh, um, this one is only one element of each kind. Mm -hmm. So I did uh, vocal, drums, guitar, bass, piano, and that's everything that's in the song. Here's so just help. use normal standard instrumentation, no, but without <laughs> overdubs and studio. I, I I I get what you mean, Victor. Yeah, I'm on your wavelength, baby. That was that was a limitation that was put upon me. Our hedgehogs can play together, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Victor, you ranked this third from the bottom. So, yeah. Are you unhappy with your results? Do you do you hate yourself? What's going on, buddy? I, um, you know, just listening to it now. Um, it's been, it's been, it's been, yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> It's it's been about nine months, I think, since I originally made this. And, you know, I just think I'm better now. And I could have, like, beefed up the thing a bit. Although the one element of each kind thing does put a little bit of a damper on there. <laughs> a restriction uh, on that. Yeah. Um, restrictions are what make art good. Yeah, exactly. Sounds like and, someone who doesn't listen to Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Uh, I really I like my vocal performance on this, and um, I I wish I had uh, you know experimented a little more. I think what everybody's kind of saying about the the dynamic uh, bit where there's one section of it that everybody seems to really like, and then there's the rest of the song, and maybe I could have uh, played with making the whole song the part that everybody likes. <laughs> to be fair, I did not think of that fix when you were asking for. Your feedback it only hit me after you would put it out where i was like oh oh it's still good but i was not helpful <laughs> so next up on the list we have disappear yeah right. uh i like this one a lot i think it's a strong song on the original i think this version is appropriately moody and atmospheric and cool great vocal performance uh just i i love the vocal production on this album just so many great like close harmony choices um yeah just a well-written song performed well what's not to love i i rank this one pretty low it's sort of the um, this is this one wins the prize for uh least fundamentally changed i think like it doesn't seem that much different from the original it's you know a little faster a little louder so it's it's slightly better but um it's you know so yeah so it is fourth from the bottom for me as compared to the original which was fourth from the top <laughs> yeah i think i i like this more than the original i also like the original but i would say it's like in terms of songwriting not the most interesting song in the world it's just a pretty standard like song <laughs> you know I'm, Anyone I'm, could have written this. I'm consulting my old notes from the last episode uh, for this one periodically, and they're so unhelpful. I just wrote hidden <laughs> drums, Joey, for everything. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did you I think of the original the episode, version of this? And that is oh, most of what you yeah. said. <laughs> yeah. 
for at least five songs, that seemed to be your only feedback. Uh, you, let me, let me, uh, two, four, six, seven, seven of them. <laughs> <That was> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I mean, it's true though. On, on that album, I, uh, uh, I, I, this was in my top five uh, for your version, Victor James. <laughs> um, I have this one at number five. Uh, uh, I like. Uh, you know, the, the beginning uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, I don't know if you're a Residence fan, but of, like, some of their later stuff. Okay. And then the way that the arrangement kind of blooms is very nice, and, and it's, you know, it's got Eno a good reference? energy. Is that a what? E- another Eno reference? Did he have an album called Blooms? No, he has a an app called Bloom. Oh, that's right. Oh, wow, I just peeked my mic out. Sorry about that. Sorry right. about that. I think uh, I think Skype uh, like compressed it for us. So, and by compressed <laughs> it, I gonna... mean filtered off the uh, top ten thousand hertz of everything. Well, I'm just gonna do the rest of the episode Sorry. like this. I keep getting distracted because we have our Facebook thread going. Where we're just sending ridiculous sound of the hedgehog. Oh pictures. my god! <laughs> <laughs> Which is like I look. I'm gonna be. Completely honest, I am not going to put that much work into editing the YouTube version of this. It's going to be a single thumbnail, as per usual. So <laughs> It's just our most ADD episode. Yeah, um, but yeah, Victor, great album. Uh, everyone, go go listen to Victor's album on Bandcamp. It's great. <laughs> do we, do, uh, Victor, do we get your comments on Disappear? No, um, this one, the uh, main... <laughs> The main thing I wanted to do with it was uh, speed it up, which I I'm think sorry. I did. I'm sorry, just... I know. <laughs> I'm seeing it, too. What? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is such a terrible episode. Like, we're, tr- we're trying to give, like, Victor's art a fair shot. We're just busy sharing the shittiest Sonic fan art. Somebody, somebody just posted a page which is just... Oh, this is... Somebody... This is the drawing telephone game. Yeah, well, it's alternating pictures and text. So it's somebody writes down some text, somebody draws a picture of it, somebody writes down what they think that picture is oh, of. Yeah. Somehow that turned into Sonic ho- hooking up a girl in a car. <laughs> <laughs> which turned into Sonic Shiping. Sonic's Gotta Go Fast Shipping Company. <laughs> Uh, the one I just put in there is a blog called Ask Mpreg Sonic. <laughs> I can't find the full picture, but I just need you all to know. <laughs> so what's that? What's that? Uh, the more you know thing that people quote that Sonic did oh, about like yes. hugs are great, but if somebody ever touches you without your consent, that's not cool. Mpreg <laughs> so, Sonic knows. So Victor disappear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the oblique strategy I pulled for this one was consult other sources, promising and unpromising. (laughs) And the album that came up in sort of like my, uh, rough listening schedule that I've been going on as I've been trying to catch up with the entirety of music history, (laughs) um, was The Mollusk by Ween. Oh, jeez. So I tried to impart a little bit of that energy here. It's obviously not, like, really on that level, but, you know, that was kind of what I had in mind for the arrangement stuff. So the uh, the correct follow-up album to Ween's The Mollusk is, of course, uh, Smashy Claws. Uh, shoot, why am I spacing on what it's called? I don't know, and my computer's being slow, so it's hard to look up. It's okay, this episode already had a lot of momentum. Right. <laughs> Momentum, not unlike Sonic the Hedgehog. Demons, when he goes Demons in the Undertow. So, as a follow up to, to mm. The Mollusk, you have to listen to Demons in the Undertow by Smashy Claw, which is basically a nerd rock band three, four years back said, Yeah, but what if The Mollusk was actually songs about the ocean and stuff instead of just like two of them and then a bunch of random ween songs? <laughs> All right. I'm interested. James, uh, also give. Or- Go ahead. Oh, also, given, uh, uh, are you a uh, Lemon Demon fan? 
Um, you were one of those Neil Sisagera kids, weren't you? Yeah, I wasn't. I'm not an active Lemon Demon listener, but I, up, up you know, pals. I know the hits. Yeah, and uh, like Magnetic Fields. Uh, that one's not familiar to me. Oh well, they might be giants. Of course, we've talked about. Yes. Those are all uh, bands that I enjoy, and I think I hear some of that influence in you, and I enjoy it in there. Oh, interesting. See, when I when I put out my first album, everybody was like, oh, he's doing Weezer. He's doing Weezer. He's doing Weezer. What? And, and I was like, <laughs> I... Have they ever listened to Weezer? I, I don't listen to Weezer, so that was interesting. And I'm glad they didn't think of the thing that I was actually doing, because then they'd be like, oh, this guy really doesn't know how to do anything besides the presidents of the United States of America. <laughs> oh, they're a great band. <laughs> I, I started listening to a lot more They Might Be Giants because my solo work kept on being compared to them. Like, well, this, this reminds me of They Might Be Giants. I was like, D okay, I've heard like one album plus the two hits. <laughs> oh, well, these things happen. <laughs> Well, hey, uh, next up on the list, we have a very divisive song. A couple people ranked this as the number one song, and then everyone else ranked it right at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. We've got Beach Ball next on the list. Ah. Get the fuck out. <laughs> Specifically, Victor and Julia rated this one at the top. Everybody else was like, bottom three. <laughs> oh, yeah. This was my last place song, both on the original and this album. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Kevin just sent that picture. It's yeah. Weezer to the Sonic the Hedgehog of music. <laughs> I, so I didn't hate this one. I put this one third from the bottom, but um, the highest of anyone who wasn't Victor or Julia. Yeah, so, so like the highest of anyone who hasn't touched Victor's penis. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> presumably. Uh, anyway, oh, I still put it low. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fair enough. You got me there. Anyway, so my, sped up. This song is still kind of a bummer. Like, I appreciate that it doesn't have jingle bells because you don't put jingle bells in summer songs. That's actually why I knocked it down some points. Uh, and like, I liked the reprise of "All the Way to Reno." Again, this entire album is composed of. That's samples, also why I knocked it down some samples points. Samples of "All the Way to Reno," which was itself comprised of samples from the rest of the album. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, well, all the things that I liked raised it up two points, knocked it down two points, but it's just fundamentally, like, a, a bummer of a song. I think there's not much to do about, to do to fix it. Ironically, it's ranked lower in uh, Victor's much better version of the album than I ranked it in the original, much worse version of the album. <laughs> yeah, this one was lacking those sweet sleigh bells. Um, the lyrics in this version weren't as good. Um, so that was another, I, I just, actually, I said that just to fuck with Victor, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> the lyrics were fine until there was some all the way to Reno bits. <laughs> right, in which that was like, oh man, that song I don't like is in this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, honestly, if I had just kept my old reveal ranking, this song would have ranked much higher, but, because I didn't, because I gave a fresh ranking, like, you know what, this version of Beach Ball is one of the... <laughs> the least essential tracks on the album. I know it's the one that has the most heart and passion from Victor, but, you know, slacking those sleigh bells. <laughs> I just, um, you know, Victor's version is infinitely better than the original. Gavin, how are uh, you finding all these pictures? He is posting <laughs> a picture of Sonic twirling a beach ball. I mean, presumably he just typed <laughs> Sonic beach ball into image search. No, these are all just coming out of my private folder. <laughs> 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 anyway, sorry, you were saying. No, it's okay. Uh, um, you know, I, 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 I like Victor's infinitely more than the original. Uh, but that being said, I think it's just the fundamental DNA of that song uh, is just not, not, not for me. Uh, you know, um, so therefore, I put it last. Yeah, which is so interesting because I, I mean, as I said on the episode, this is like one of my favorite REM songs. <laughs> so I was, I was very intimidated to do it. And I should have known that like for this panel specifically, I could have done anything and any, and everybody would have liked it more. Right. Yes. <laughs> Just making a different song than the one it was. We'd all been like, yeah, fixed it. 
I, I like the ori- <laughs> I like the original better. It needs sleigh bells to really feel like you know Christmas on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> We're not an Australian band here. Nobody's from Australia, which actually would be well, appropriate. Like you do summer songs uh, with sleigh bells in Australia, I guess. So here's here's the thing. Um, for the lyric rewrites, and this is this is one that I like. Uh, this is the only one where I actively rewrote the lyrics. Um, and I did that while I was on vacation in Australia on a beach. <laughs> oh. <laughs> was it at Christmas? Wow. Uh, it was in it was in May, so it was about as close to winter as it gets there. Yeah. Pretty close. It was like fall, I guess, there. So not not quite. Anyway, (laughs) 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 oh, I meant to mute it before I started laughing. Oh, (laughs) they're not wearing shoes. (laughs) This is such a bad episode. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, geez. Remember how iTunes used to have that option to have the photos change when you would listen to podcasts? (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah is there a way to still do that <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna put that amount of work into this episode i'm sorry <laughs> uh. all right so so victor why does the song mean so much to you well i i think it's the very dna that you guys are talking about not working for you works over time for me just the the pieces of the song themselves i think on a musical level really speak to me and the melody really speaks to me so i didn't want to uh i don't know i I, it's difficult to explain which is maybe why it does mean so much to me (laughs) (laughs) my god (laughs) this is gonna be our worst episode (laughs) this is such a bad episode can you put a disclaimer at the front that says just what level of a shit show this is right this is, this is uh, really good for an audio yeah. medium yeah i feel a little bit bad that like i put in the effort of redoing my ranking because i wanted this to be a good episode out of respect for victor <laughs> and i wanted it to be a total shit show and then we're all just like mm, on second thought shit post the episode so so julia um Take a mo- uh, a minute to stop posting uh, Sonic the Hedgehog porn in our chat. <laughs> <laughs> Just can't be stopped. What? Why oh do you God. like oh, that so much? Oh wow. my God! <laughs> For those of you playing the home game, I just sent in a uh, a photo of the four makeups of of Kiss with over hedgehog faces. <laughs> it's really good. Some of these are downright <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> I just found a built into Facebook search. There is a GIF of Sonic just hovering in the air, walking along, <laughs> using his eyeballs as feet. Oh wow! Whoa, what? wait, Greg, what is that photo? Just had it on hand, man. Wow. <laughs> oh, I see. That's that was Ace, but they photoshopped over his costume. Yep. Oh, uh, wow, that's a great photo. All right, so, uh, Julia, beach ball. <laughs> yes, bringing it back to beach ball. Bring it back to beach ball and photos that people can't see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the thing about this song. I love the production of it very, very much. And one thing I think that has become abundantly clear in a lot of my rankings of things is I tend to be a complete slut for vocoder and vocoder similar effects on <laughs> on things so i really like that that works super well for me in this song i just i really like it i like the original um i have no fucking clue what you're talking about with the goddamn jingle bells it's driving me nuts every time you say there are jingle bells and sleigh bells in that song i can't hear them in the original yeah i must have completely tuned those out i've never heard them yeah they're all over perhaps i've drowned them out but (laughs) Either way. So what I will once again say is that even though I rate this second from the bottom, I still think it's very good. 
it's just not the original good. Uh, but this is still like, <laughs> I'd still give this an A. Just, you know, the other version is, a, you know, an A plus because those sleigh bells. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a sleigh bell edit for yeah. you. Oh, then that's going to jump. <laughs> if you make a sleigh bell edit and cut out that all the way to Reno stuff, straight to number one. <laughs> but are we ready to move on from beach ball? I think so. Great transition. <laughs> Right. Yes, I have been. <laughs> All right, next up on the list is a song that Gavin ranked pretty high because he loves Peter Gabriel. We've got <laughs> I've Been High next on the list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Once again, another it... great Peter Gabriel-esque tune. <laughs> well, do you want to know my, my, my one note that I wrote for this song? Yes. This shit hella groovy, though. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Like oh, most yeah. Peter Gabriel material, hella groovy. Makes sense. Yep. This is a groover. <laughs> it's a groover and a shaker. I ended up putting this one pretty close to the bottom because this is this is like the one song that there was nowhere to go with it. Like I just don't think this is a particularly catchy song to start with. So the improvement, the production's much more interesting, but you know, polishing a turd. You polished that turf <laughs> really nice, Victor. Man, I so want to do you. Lamb Lies Down on Broadway now on this podcast. <laughs> oh, oh, we we will fight to the death. <laughs> I mean, you and I will probably not fight to the death. We'll be like, this is a great album. And Steve will be like, this is slow and boring. The wall did it better. Uh, well, oh. Uh, <laughs> 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 Hot takes. When Greg just says things accidentally right. What a guy. I mean, Gavin, you know that is 100% what would happen on that episode. Yeah, but I, I, I might have to agree that The Wall's a better album. I mean, no, it is. Okay. It, it is a better album than The Lamb Eyes. Like, it's so what are great. we talking yes. about then? <laughs> no, just like the difference is we, you and I would think both albums are great, and Steve would think The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway is shit. Yeah. Uh, the only, the, the most I've heard of The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway is the one time... Uh, we played a show with um, our friend uh, Ray, the photographer, and somebody just like randomly called for an encore after he finished playing. So he's like doing solo guitar stuff, and somebody said, or no, like he was playing guitar with Regdar and the Fighters, my solo band, and somebody was like, play an encore, play all of The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And he was like, yeah, I will absolutely do that, and then started playing it until, you know, the host of the show said, get off the stage. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I've been high. Um, one of the best Peter Gabriel era Genesis songs. Absolute classic <laughs> masterpiece. You know what it is about Reveal, I think, is that I tend to like all the choruses of the song well enough, but I think the verses are... Nothing. <laughs> and this one really shows it off, where I was like, I, just take the verses out. I can't hear them. They mean nothing to me. I love the chorus of this song. I, I oh, really I thought it was going to be a lot higher. You like the verse? I love the verse. It's very Genesisian. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. genesis I, I just, Yes. Mm, I just like the chorus of this one so much that I'm not interested in hearing anything else. I'm just not. <laughs> Uh, so, I think because that that tended to be one of my comments throughout this whole album was like, none of this is really Victor's fault, but <laughs> I like the choruses and I'm not particularly interested in the verses <laughs> tends to be the case. But it's like, it's because of how the song is written. And just because I'm like, there's not a lot you can do with this that's going to make me want to listen to it. See, I think this is like one of the stronger verse melodies on the album. Like, I think it's incredibly catchy. I think this I know I know Gavin thinks I'm crazy with all my Peter Gabriel comparisons, but I'm being very sincere where I feel it's a very Peter Gabriel esque melody on top of this. <laughs> like I'm not saying that just to troll Gavin. I am saying stuff to troll Gavin, but that's like a sincere opinion of mine. <laughs> well, I, I can I can accept you for who you are. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Uh, so do you have any comments on this song? I mean, you like Peter Gabriel more than I do, so yeah. that's why you ranked it higher than I did. <laughs> um, 
It's uh, oh, sorry, I completely blanked on what song I'm talking about. Now. I've been high. Uh, I've stop, been high. Stop smoking weed for a second and talk about this <laughs> song about being high. Oh no, I'm doing something way worse than that right now. Um, Are you high on mushrooms? No, 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 no. Peter uh, Gabriel, the Hedgehog. <laughs> oh no! That. Um, yeah, no, I, I've been high. I put that <laughs> as my number four. Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm back. Um, yeah, no, it's it's. I think the it took a song that you know I can't remember how the REM version goes, but I'm imagining it was very uh, mm, probably more like ambienty. Uh, I'm betting. But I, I like how it was a more concise kind of groove thing uh, in this in this arrangement, and I think it really it it made the song enjoyable for me. Some juicy production. Hell yeah! <laughs> Thick and juicy. Thick, <laughs> juicy production, just the way I like it. <laughs> um. So this is one where I did do a little bit of a structural cop-out here, um, where I cut out, sort of cut out the bridge. But if you listen to the piano notes being played in the ascending kind of ambient section in the middle there, they do play the chords that are played in the bridge. I just didn't want to sing whatever bullshit he sings in that in that <laughs> part. Uh, so wait, you and then, like Reveal, right? Yeah, he just doesn't like just bridges. not this song, <laughs> and half of the other songs. <laughs> Wash over me, I close my eyes so I can see. Make my make believe believe in me. I can see why yeah. you didn't want to sing yeah, that. Yeah, I can see why you wouldn't want to sing that bullshit. <laughs> oh yeah, no, you you made the right call. That sounds dude. like some Brian Eno bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the other thing is all of the um, all of the um. Drum sounds, not the, there's like a, um, uh, no, that might be too. Basically all the percussion in this song is made out of the sample that is the very end of the lifting. And it's meant to transition well from that one to this one. I don't know if it does, especially when you stream it where there's like almost a second of delay between songs. It doesn't quite work as well, but, um, yeah, that was that was one of the first ones where it was like, because I did the lifting first since it's first in uh, original reveal, and then I did this one. So the drum sounds are made out of the final uh, the distorted sound in the lifting. I found they transitioned pretty well. So yeah, I it was a success for me, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I did not notice that transition because there was a full second of delay between the two songs playing. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by Bandcamp. Brought to you by Bandcamp. But also, I think I yeah. noticed it because I've listened to this album a lot. <laughs> like It works really well on my iTunes where I have it downloaded <laughs> because I'm a real fan. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's fair. Well, hey, any other comments on <laughs> I've Been High before we move on? It's just a good song. <laughs> really good. All right, well, next up on the list, we have Saturn Return. Oh, yeah, so we're getting up to the songs that I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm. Th th this is great now. Uh, <laughs> I rank this one um, fourth just because in terms of, like, the original song isn't as amazing as, amazing of a melody of some of the top ones, but... But this Steve one... loves Five Finger Death Punch, yeah, so... But... <laughs> <laughs> this, one, this one wins the award for Most Improved. Uh, you got rid of the bad regdar, you added vocoder, you added a crunchy guitar build. This one, like, shot way up in the rankings. Like, I gave it an 8 out of 10 compared to the original, which was 2 out of 10 and second from the bottom. <laughs> yeah, so this is a this was a very well done one. So I ranked it third from the bottom. Um, <laughs> this is... I think one of the songs where we I noticed the limitations of the production, where there are parts where the drums sound great and parts where the drums sound a little bit too robotic, a little bit too perfect. And I think, uh, it, like, it's meant to be like this kick-ass rock drums, but it's very clear that, like, oh, 
these are the samples he had in, in reason. Um, <laughs> and so because of that, and also like the guitar tone sounds like the guitar tone that Steve thinks is good without me supervising him. Uh, where it's just like, oh, that's not actually good rock guitar tone, but someone who doesn't listen to hard rock would think it's a good hard rock guitar tone. Man, art is subjective, Greg. Uh, but I, I, I understand the concept behind it. I think the arrangement's very good. I do like the build with the kick drum. I freaking love the harmonies on this one. Like, your your close harmonies are just phenomenal on this entire album. And I think the arrangement is good, but I think it's a matter of the production not being able to match the vision, necessarily. And so basically, if you just, like, had slightly better drum programming and slightly better guitar tone, this one, I think, would be a much better realized version of the concept. But I do appreciate the creativity. I think it's a strong song in the first place. Uh, and it's really just a matter of just, like, if you had better samples or, like, if you had, like, an extra hundred bucks and could get the better samples... Uh, <laughs> it would bump up, but I mean, it's still, it's still good, but I think it doesn't reach the same level of quality as the rest of the album, where this is the one that sounds, that, like, reminds me, like, oh, this is an independent artist using, like, relatively inexpensive samples, where the rest of the album, I don't notice that as much. This is one of the songs where there's a couple moments that takes me out of it because I notice, like, the sampling being used. Honestly, it does the same thing for me, <laughs> especially now, this uh, this long after having done it. Um, and this is another one that I was uh, like pretty intimidated to do, because as I said on the original episode, this is one of my favorites from the album. And uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it, it is tough. I do like all of that. I completely agree with <laughs> I um, just like that E Joey hits the E drums. That's I'm into it. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> some some Joey at some point hit drums and then yes. I told the computer to keep hitting them. <laughs> I like yeah, I like the arrangement uh, of of this. I, I think your arrangements of these tunes kind of across the board are 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 better. I mean, this was uh, I only gave this one one more point than Greg did. Um, ooh, a nice plosive P there. Plosives. Um, yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, no, I, I, I think this is just another song where, like, uh, maybe the, the DNA of the song that is Saturn Return isn't necessarily my favorite DNA, the hedgehog. <laughs> I bet that one exists. <laughs> no, we'll find it. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and that's, I mean, that's another thing we talked about on the original episode was like, this song doesn't have a lot dynamics wise. It doesn't have a lot, even like chord changes wise. Um, but I, I'm very emotionally drawn to, um, sort of the narrative of it. It's one of the few songs where I did kind of already know the lyrics to it. Um, and yeah, uh, I ended up in my, when I was doing the vocal sessions for it, I got very emotional towards the end and I decided to leave it in both because I'm lazy and because <laughs> I, uh, I don't know. I, I, it I liked cool. it. No, it, it's, yeah. it sounds very cool. And I think, you know, you and I have discussed, um, the direction of your art where you said that you feel you would shine best as sort of like an electronica artist because of like the the drum sampling capabilities you have, but you just want to rock more as if you have an entire band behind you. Yeah. Uh, and I think this is sort of um, the track that best exemplifies that conflict where your ideas are so good for a kick-ass rock band, but your best sounding tracks are the ones that are electronica. And as someone who has to pay hired guns, oh my god, I fucking relate to that dude, and I'm so sorry <laughs> for that conflict. It sucks so much. I feel for you. Uh, but I, I respect the hell out of this arrangement. It is such a great arrangement of the song. And, you know, maybe someday I'll 
come into millions of dollars and then I'll have some real drummers record it. I'll, I'll, uh, Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah I'll, I'll pay, I'll pay Gavin in blowjobs. <laughs> Wear this mask. I'm going to call you Joey. <laughs> <laughs> Victor, this is a Marty Marty's Beller name. mask. What? <laughs> Uh, so Julia, you I rate the <laughs> Julia, you rate this second place. I did. I, I stand by it. Um, again, uh, it's me, the vocoder slut. So if you put it there, <laughs> you use it well. It's gonna probably rank really high for me because I I love the production of this song. I love the song writing in this one in particular, where just to me it's. It's really unique kind of songwriting, at least in my opinion. I, I, I like the way this one's made. I think it's an interesting song. All right. Well, do we have any other comments on Saturn Return before we move on? You're doing great, Victor. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I mean you're you're doing a you're doing a great job of rolling with the punches of just like <laughs> very honest critiques of your music, which is mostly positive, which is good. It's true. Um, and and punctuated by the occasional hedgehog. <laughs> right. Picture. Occasional. <laughs> Constant deluge of sexy hedgehog pictures. Speaking of things that make people wet, next up on the list is I'll take the rain. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> My number one. Also my number one. Uh, I gave it eight points. Um, Victor and Julia, why are you so wrong about this song that everyone else agrees is pretty great? It's not very good. <laughs> I don't like this song at all. This is the sweetest. Whoa, like, wait, really? If yeah, I had to cut a bottom. song, I said this when I gave my initial critique, which is that, like, I know you're not going to cut any songs, but if you could, this I, I never want to hear this again. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I like, I mean, this is way better than the original, but I don't want to listen to either of them. <laughs> I, I will skip both 100% of the time. Ouch. Uh, I actually wouldn't skip this one. I think this is a great song in keeping the momentum going of the album. I know Victor made it super short because he is not into the original, but <laughs> it's kind of the appropriate length. Like, the fact that the tempo has picked up so much, it allows the, the melodies to shine. It feels energetic. It feels fun. I enjoy this version a lot. And it's the the rock drumming is actually working with this track. And it's not as noticeable of like, these are samples with reason. Like, it's it, it works very well as a cohesive piece. And um, honestly, I gave it eight points. I probably should have ranked it higher. But because I don't like the original enough, I'm like, ah, I'm not going to give it any more than it already has. This is enough for you, I'll take the rain. But <laughs> as far as tracks on the album, it's a standout and such a noticeable improvement where, like, if this won the ranking, I'd be like, yeah, it's fine. I get it. So I guess that that's the trick with this entire album is you just, you, you take the original REM songs and you speed them up and you do, like, short punky rock versions of them that are under two minutes long and you get a great song out of it like for the most part this album is full of catchy hooks you just do them in, in a pop punk version <laughs> we need a blink 182 version of re-re reveal <laughs> that's what i can do <laughs> I, I, unfortunately now you have julia's attention unfortunately <laughs> But you know, Victor. Somehow I do... there are dick jokes in all these songs now. <laughs> but Victor, I do understand you speeding up this song so you could like get it done as quickly as possible with as little real estate on the album as possible. Get it over with, <laughs> which uh, you should have done for more of them, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! Uh, but I, I, th I thought this was honestly a really great version of the song, much better than the original. Bravo! Well, thank you. I do like that classic REM sound. Yeah, so one of the oblique strategies I pulled was um, it just said, would anybody want it? <laughs> and that made me think, well, what would make me want this song? Oh, what if they had written it on like one of their first two albums? So I tried to make it sound more like a murmur song. Mm. 
Mom. So that was that was kind of my uh, that was kind of my thought process behind it. And in fact, the original version had me singing both the first verse and the second verse at the same time. <laughs> oh wow! Like they like they would have. <laughs> <laughs> so there's still I only left in a few instances of that um, that are still in there. But yeah, so the original version had me doing my best Michael Stipe and my best Michael Mills. Uh, you know to varying degrees of success uh, yeah that was the main thing about this one it was i was like i cut it to one third the original length <laughs> and yeah it's uh it's still not a song i'm particularly fond of <laughs> but it was kind of fun to play with my riff that i added nice <laughs> rock and roll rock and or roll <laughs> So are you surprised with how high this one ended up ranking? Well, I mean, I made it sound like the version of R.E.M. that everybody agrees is really good, so... <laughs> uh, I guess not. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so <are> the, the <laughs> Sonic photos. <laughs> what have you guys been doing? Did you post a Sonic Bukaki, Greg? Whoa. Oh, God. Uh... <laughs> He took the rain, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments on how take the rain before we move on? <laughs> I just want to say that no one really laughed at my uh, Billy Corgan with the nipples hedgehog, and I worked oh. real hard on that. Oh, you, you made I don't even yourself. know if I saw that. <laughs> well, here you go, Gavin. I'm kidding. <laughs> Titus liked it. I didn't even see that. Where was that at? Oh, wait, really? Oh, I could it's so small rendered. Oh yeah, you gotta see. click on it. Uh, <laughs> oh man. Greg, what are you what are you doing? Show feet. Show feet. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this hurts. <laughs> Everybody hurts. Ooh. They wrote that. Sometimes. <laughs> now that's a fucking album. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next up on the list, we have Imitation Great of transition. Life. <laughs> so from right. the last one being the best song on the album, this goes to uh, Most most Ruined. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Uh, this was, so this was like the one really good song on the original album, and then you had like, Took out those few drums that Joey actually hit and turned it into an ambient <laughs> song, and it made me sad. It's not all the way at the bottom, but like this this arrangement made me sad. Yeah, I, I got this one a bunch of points because I thought the female vocals were really terrible and ruined the song. So whoever you got to do female vocals, just never work with them again in any capacity. Whoa. No, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm fucking with yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> He's laboring under the assumption that it's Julia in the hopes it that it's funny. It is not me. <laughs> Damn it, so you just insulted Olivia, and now I have to fight for her honor. So, uh, go to hell. <laughs> no, she, she, she did great. I just thought I was trolling Julia. Instead, I'm trolling a person I don't know. So. <laughs> <laughs> she thought you were blasting me. I was doing it for the bit. But um, it was I respect me, that. But I will still have to, I mean, <laughs> Yeah, now hell. you guys have to duel at dawn. That's right. Also, no, if I had been singing on this Vincent, album, uh, it would have been Vincent the bottom. Vinnie Vincent Hedgehog Dog. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's Vinnie Vincent? Yep. I thought that was Judge Judy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the thing is, this is not as good as the original version. But it's still one of the best songs on the album. In my original bullshit ranking, I gave it 12 points. Uh, it's still got 10 points from me in this ranking. So, yeah. Even Victor can't mess up this song. It's that good. <laughs> <laughs> I... I like this version more than the original. But then again, I like everything on, on this version more than the original. Um, <laughs> you know... I, I'm de I'm defending old Victor here. You're doing great, <laughs> buddy. Thanks. I also think it's better than the original. I like that it's faster, but like the thing with this song is it's again like the songwriting itself is just not interesting to me at all. Like it's catchy, sure, but like 
anybody could have made this. And at least like as proof with that your Olivia's did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like with Olivia's vocals, like I like that part. I especially like her low harmonies very, very much. Uh I think that makes the song a lot more fun to listen to and just kind of more upbeat, but at the end of the day it's just kind of a whatever song in terms of songwriting. Which you had nothing to do with. So. <laughs> Which I you're, you're absolved. I like um, this is I, the one that's most blatantly a, uh, just like a pop song in the original. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I just don't like pop songs. <laughs> I can't remember how the original goes. It, it sounds goes like this, like... but with drums. Where's the... Yeah. Uh, when <laughs> when did R.E.M. do their extreme metal phase? With like the death growls and things like that. Which album was oh, that? Have you not heard Fables of the Reconstruction? <laughs> no, I haven't Bro, actually. Do you listen oh, to Reveal? Man. No, I've Wendell listened to the G two albums just... that we've talked about yeah. on this podcast. Wendell G. Brutal <laughs> vocals on that. <laughs> um, uh, so this one, I think I would like the original song a lot more if it was significantly faster. So that was one of my big things that I wanted to do. I also early on was like, toying with making the second verse just the first verse of driver eight since there's the same chord progression oh I nice. like I song. Made this song really cool. i like the song that song a lot more and i decided to do less of that kind of bullshit than i was originally intending oh but driver eight is such a great song driver eight kicks ass driver eight is far superior to this <laughs> <laughs> it's the only rem guitar riff i learned how to play ah uh, it's a great one That's yeah boom 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 I like that you learned to play it on the bass, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, I learned to sing it on the bass. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Imitation of Life. It's a pop single. This version is fine. Any other version comments? It's not a pop single. <laughs> Any um, other I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember if there's anything, like, production-wise that's interesting. No, um, there isn't. I <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but hey, I think it's a good song. Speaking of good songs, next up on the list is a song that Victor made better. We've got <laughs> The Lifting next on the list. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is fucking great. <laughs> this one slaps. Yeah. Good morning. That's my favorite part. Yeah. <laughs> love the good morning. Yeah. That's such a great, great delivery. My, my notes on this one just say my biggest disappointment with James Game Boy is the lack of chiptunes elements. <laughs> so I was a pretty big fan of this one. Oh, yeah. It does have a little bit of that. Yeah. More I, bleep bloops, please. I mean, I think Victor really shines the best <laughs> with... Uh, hold on, what is this hedgehog for? Oh, jeez. <laughs> what is this smut? <laughs> okay, so Victor really shines... Oh, no. ...the most when he allows the electronic elements into his music based upon just the gear that he has. Like, that's the stuff that sounds the best. And this is one of those songs that really leans into the strengths of his production materials. And so it's one of the ones that works best in isolation outside of the context of the album where you could show this to somebody and they would want to listen to his music and check out this entire album. Uh, so I would say this would be a single from re Reveal. If I were to pick one, this would be one of the singles. And just, it, it works well on pretty much all the levels. Just great vocals, great production, great performance. What's not to love? Apparently nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Seems to no, be the it's, consensus. It's, uh, I like the. Uh, it's another great arrangement. The way that you use that never, 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 never melody at the end uh, is great, and the sound of it. Your your vocals throughout the whole album are are really good. Um, I might have gone with a different guitar tone at the beginning myself, but I did not record this album. In so, fairness, you wouldn't have done this album. <laughs> I would not have recorded this. So, uh, you know, someone had to. It's a dirty job. Someone had to do it. Victor did it. <laughs> and I would have used a different one when I wouldn't do it. <laughs> um, so the thing about that guitar tone, especially at the beginning, 
Um, so I guess now it was years ago. The um, the audio interface that I use, it's the like the Scarlet 2i4, 2i2, probably whatever, kind of the normal basic one that every. That's what uh, I'm running through right now. Yeah, nice, affordable, gets the job done. Yeah. I dropped that. <laughs> oh um, no! <laughs> so um, every once in a while, it's probably like once in every fifty times that I use it. Um, Everything that I plug into it comes out sounding really distorted like that. And Ooh. the so the day that I sat down to start recording this song, because this was the first song on the album, I was like, all right, I'm doing it. I'm starting re-reveal today. And I plug in and my guitar sounds like that. Just going, <laughs> that's just the clean sound going through. It sounds like distorted garbage. And I was like, uh, okay, mm, <laughs> I'm going to try and roll with the uh roll with the punches here um so i just recorded a couple uh times through the loop of me playing the main chord progression of the verses and then just uh chopped it up and used it as a sample and that's i, I rolled with it that that was uh that was kind of the weird thing uh for this one it the whole project started off on a weird awkward ankle turn <laughs> well, hey, I thought it was good. <laughs> thought Sorry, catching up on hedgehogs now. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, thick and juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I like this picture of Tails just looking oh, I bored love this foot while, one. while licking Sonic's toes. <laughs> <laughs> I got that by searching Stinky the Hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the feet. Why does he have nipples? Well, oh, he sure does. He, he has <laughs> nipples in, in the one I made. What a great episode, <laughs> you guys. <laughs> right? It's going to be a double episode that nobody likes. <laughs> you I know mean, what? Already, the odds of anybody listening to it on title alone is pretty low, so. Right. <laughs> this will be the one episode that your mom listens to, Victor. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, she's not finding out about this. <laughs> she better not. She better not, because I have said too much about coming over Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> and she thinks you're purely a Mario girl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, we're at the number two song on the album. Next up on the list, we've got Beat a Drum. Hmm. Ranking That's what significantly I do for a higher than it did on the original reveal episode. <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> where are you finding all these Sonic feet picks? Beat a huh? drum. Where did My I put that one? Folder. Oh, I actually put this one right in the middle. This is probably second most improved. Mm, I love this one. There are drums being hit mm -hmm. on this song, so there's uh, actual drums. Uh, I don't. I'm not in love with the old timey phonography kind of sound, um, <laughs> but it is kind of cool to see that juxtaposed with like the alt rock chorus melodies, which like just isn't a style of melody you tend to hear in that music. Like, I'm sorry, did you just say juxtaposed? I was gonna say <laughs> juxtaposed. What do you Juxta say? Juxtaposed. Juxtaposed. Uh, I'm a language descriptivist. Uh, words are whatever <laughs> we want them to be. <laughs> it's it's juxtaposed like it's like juking around it, you know. <laughs> it's next to it because it's, you know, trying to sneak past. Uh, okay. Yes. So I I loved this version as like the guy who went to jazz camp every summer in high school. <laughs> I was like, hey, this is a attempt at doing that kind of music, but with MIDI instrumentation. And man, you did the best you could under the circumstances. Um, but yeah, I dug it. Um, you know, I loved I loved the brass. Uh, I loved how instead of just putting on a vocal effect, you just sang it weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I loved you. So that, that was pretty great. But like, as someone who loves Lazing on a Sunday Afternoon by Queen. Um, oh, it's a great tune. That's a great song. Yeah. This is that of this album, but the fact that you decided to do that with Beat a Drum, which was like a song that was noticeable for how the drums were unimpressive, to be like, <laughs> I'm going to make the drums interesting on this. Um, yeah, this was really fun. And of 
the songs on the album that are the most interesting to me, this is probably my number one. I don't think it's the best track on the album, but in terms of doing something interesting with it, uh, I think it's the most successful. I I wish you had just actually put a vocal effect on instead of just singing weird because <laughs> I like the crooner voice. I I I feel like it sounds a little bit awkward if I'm being honest, and that it sounds like it doesn't sound like anyone from that era would actually sing. It just sounds like you're trying to obtain the tin can vocal effect just by singing weird. <laughs> Which in some ways I admire, but I'm like I would have just prefer preferred like you to sing it normal and to add the effect. And I think that would have ultimately made it less goofy. But as it stands, I still enjoyed the hell out of it. And hey, uh, it came to number two in our ranking. If I used my original ranking, the song would have ranked much lower. But because I ranked based upon this version of the album, it accelerates to number two. Huzzah! <laughs> I definitely agree with that. Uh, that note about how it could have used maybe a crackle filter. Um, I, th I think it would help a little bit, but I do also really like this one. Um, the other reason why I think a crackle would be good, though, is not just because it would help it sound less awkward, not that it sounds, like, bad, but it would also help, I think, distinguish, like, the contrast between how this song is kind of goofy, and then it transitions and ends on a really, like, sincerely beautiful sound. <laughs> And I think it'd be cool to have that, like, contrast sort of driven even further with something like that. But I love this one. I think it's super fun. Steve, uh, you are the one who complained the most about Hit the Drums, Joey. Yep. <laughs> say, so this is probably second most improved on the album. Uh, it's not quite as most improved as uh, as Saturn Returns, but, like, you definitely very fixed this one. <laughs> um so greg you talked you appreciate it as someone who goes to or who went to jazz camp every summer i only went to jazz camp once which is why it, <laughs> it's not as uh as jazzy as it might be <laughs> um uh quick question uh how does everyone feel about my clarinet playing <laughs> i i liked it i noticed it <laughs> you didn't that's like the beginning of the song it yeah, I wanted to while. ask if that was you or not. That was me. Nice. I had just picked up the clarinet. I enjoyed. Oh, really? It quite you you never played it before that? Uh, yeah. I that was I first assemble. I put the clarinet together and then instantly hit record and played that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I I enjoyed it quite a bit. I figured that was an actual live instrument because like. As someone who because works of how with... sharp it goes at some points. <laughs> no, it's mainly because, and you know this as someone who works with MIDI, MIDI, brass, and horns sound like shit. Yeah. And I'm like, this <laughs> sounds too good yeah. to be MIDI, but it also doesn't sound like someone who's really good at the instrument playing it. <laughs> and so that's from like, is this MIDI? Is it like a really good sample? Or is just someone not that great at clarinet playing it? <laughs> so... It, it looks like that has been revealed. Ah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. <laughs> but um, um, yeah, I thought for your first stab at clarinet, solid. <laughs> Thanks. I'm trying to be more consistent about practicing this year because basically after this, I stopped for the rest of the year practicing. So now I have to catch back up. Um. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else. The so this is one that in the original track listing uh, is kind of in the exact middle, and then in the re-adjusting of the track listing that I did, I had already done the ending that it does, and it just so happened to transition perfectly into the lifting. I didn't actually plan that. That's just how that song ended, and then the lifting started, and then. It's a pretty cool transition, it's I think. It's a great transition. Great transition. Great transition. <laughs> great Speaking transition. of great transitions. <laughs> Speaking of great transitions, Gavin, did we get your thoughts on this? I like it. Um, it's... <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, how do I... 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I, I really have a lot of the same uh, kind of notes as I as I do for most of the songs on this. Uh, it's way better than the original, and I like what you did with the arrangements. And you really kind of made you know turn these songs from kind of little weird blobs of nothing into songs that I enjoy. Well, I appreciate that. I don't know how many times I've said that on this episode, but I'm gonna well, you're going to say it, it again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being honest, you can stand to say it a few more times. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, me or him? Both. <laughs> <laughs> so, before we get to the final song in the ranking, I'm going to read uh, the order of my original bullshit ranking that would have happened <laughs> if we left in my first ranking that everyone got upset with. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, from the bottom to the top, it would have been Disappear at the Bottom. Then all the way to Reno. Then she just wants to be Saturn Return. Summer turns to high. Beach ball. Beat a drum. I'll take the rain. The lifting. I've been high. Imitation of life would then have been number two. But. The actual real canonical The ranking. actual real canonical ranking, which has the same number one. From the bottom Ooh. to the top. All the way to Reno. She just wants to be. Summer turns to sigh, disappear, <laughs> beach ball, I've been sigh, Saturn return, I'll take the rain, imitation of life, the lifting, beat a drum, but the best song on re-reveal by James Game Boy, according to this panel of experts and Victor, is Chorus and the Ring. I'm sad that I'm flying. My number one song on the album. <laughs> yeah. Versus, in the previous ranking, my third from the bottom of the album. <laughs> so this one would have won either way. No one put this below the top three. Yep. Um, yep. It all goes downhill from track one on this album. <laughs> Ooh. But I think this one has really crisp, clear production. The, the reverb on Victor's voice allows his voice to sit really nicely in the mix. It's that great, like, you know, pop, dance, like, kind of industrial thing that he has going on. Like, really, this is... Kind of industrial. In, industrial in the sense of the electronica, I guess, sorry. Uh, electronica with the drums. Like, it's all the elements coming together into something cohesive that makes the song much better, stand out more... And, you know, I love the ending of this track. Uh, just phenomenal vocals throughout. Um, just, yeah, it just it's an all-around success story and makes you excited to listen to this album. It gets off to a great start and shows the amount of promise that this album has and is really, once again, it's keeping that same core melody of the original song, but in an interesting new arrangement that just makes the song that much more dynamic. So... A home run, dare I say, S rank. <laughs> I made it. You did it. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a very powerful opening. Uh, yeah. it, it's, you know, I, I immediately, like, by the time the vocals came in, I immediately went from, you know, kind of thinking, oh, man, I hope I like this, to, all right, I'm excited about this. Let's see where this goes. And like it went good. Band walking by in the yeah. background for somebody? No, my, my brother's teaching a drum lesson downstairs in the garage. Oh, okay. Sounds like it's going great. He is beating the drum, Joey. <laughs> yeah, you should, like, sample that and use it for an R.E.M. album. <laughs> Sounds There's just a hint like of drum, drum in this song. <laughs> <laughs> my, no my notes on this one say it's faster than the original. It's got weird, glitchy vocals. It's got warm synth. Uh, weirdly, I like this, and I'm surprised. <laughs> then I was the rest of the album. I was like, okay, it turns out this is all just better. Mm, it's so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, the main thing I had uh, going into this one, this is another one that I love from the original album and I was very intimidated to do. Uh, and I decided I wanted to do it kind of like, um, I don't know if you guys listen to David Bazan. No. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, well, What's his name? What's it called? Uh, Pedro. I've listened to Pedro yeah. the Lion. Oh, I, I actually, that guy. I'm not familiar with Pedro the Lion very much, but I really love his solo work. 
Um, well, to, to be fair, he recently switched back to calling himself Pedro the Lion and just said, like, I shouldn't have made that change. Uh, I should have just called myself Pedro the Lion for all of my projects. Yeah. Although there was a weird thing. I think he switched to calling himself David Bazan when he became an atheist to sort of distance okay. himself from the Christian themes of Pedro the Lion. Mm -hmm. Which like makes sense with your, the... your, your spouse a lot. <laughs> he had a lot of songs Which... about murdering your spouse. <laughs> Which makes sense for the lyrical content of the albums that I'm most familiar with. Um, but his, his album Blanco uh, is kind of the one that most inspired my arrangement choices here. And it's uh, as far as actual like production stuff, it's pretty sparse, but the it's like a couple of cents, the drums and my vocals, and that's pretty much it. Um, which is kind of, it's pretty similar to what he did in the headphones albums or album, I guess, where it's just kind of two different synths playing and the drums and him singing and that's it. And uh, I really, I love the songwriting on that album. And uh, I thought it would apply well here. And most of the people I show it to seem to agree. Including you guys. <laughs> yeah, yo. Damn it, Kevin. What? What did I do? <laughs> Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> Sonic was once lost, but now he is found in Jesus Christ. All right. Gotta... What is he whose help is God of Jacob, whose hope is the Lord God? <laughs> Psalm 146.5. Why do I have to scroll up manually? Okay. Um... Okay. So, Jack Chick the Hedgehog. <laughs> Disappointing results. Oh, do we have? I'm sorry, I got so distracted by that. Who has talked about this song? <laughs> Who has not chimed in about chorus in the ring? <laughs> it's great. Um, well, I already chimed in. I think everybody chimed in at least a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I saw that one. I, I googled Sanic, and that came up as a Minecraft skin. <laughs> I think this this is the most Sonic the Hedgehog song on the album. That's why it's the best one. Because it involves rings. <laughs> oh, imagine if oh, I yeah. use that, that sample. noise. The oh, I'd love it. Bling. Yeah, no, I think the production of this song is probably the best on the album. The vocals are extremely good. Plus, making it the opening track was the wisest choice. Wiser I than think. covering this entire album. That was a good <laughs> choice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, that is our ranking. <laughs> so, this is a weird episode. <laughs> this is the most distracted episode. <laughs> yeah, all right, I'm going to say for next week's episode, let's try not to just post Sonic porn the entire time. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Well, we'll try. Ah, <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, so normally we go around the panel, talk about uh, if we were happy with the ranking, surprised by it, and also... I don't think I need to ask this. Everyone likes this better than the original. Victor, do you like oh, your yeah. album better than the original? Um, it's tough to say. I think I do listen to it more now. So maybe yes. So 100% of people agree your album is better than R.E.M.'s. Yep. <laughs> I wager even R.E.M. would agree. Probably. Well, we, we tried to tweet it to Mike Mills. He uh, liked it. He liked the tweet, but we don't know if he actually liked the song. <laughs> oh, boomers and Twitter. <laughs> I'm just going to keep harassing him until he... <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll tag him in this episode. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did, you know, Mike Mills is scrolling on Twitter like, I didn't mean to hit like on that transphobic tweet. <laughs> Wait, what? I was making a joke about uh, millennials, uh, sorry, about boomers on Twitter liking transphobic oh. tweets by accident. <laughs> he mostly just talks about baseball. Oh, yeah. he tweets about politics. And politics. So, uh, were, were you guys happy with the ranking, surprised by it? I didn't have too strong of feelings on the ranking because I generally liked the whole album, so... 
honestly, I would have been fine with this in pretty much any order, except all the way to Reno, like, doing well at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, otherwise, I was fine with the ranking. It was all... I didn't find there to be giant gaps in quality in this album. It was all pretty consistent and pretty good and superior to the original. So it's like, it was very difficult to rank, which is why I didn't feel bad about flying in my original ranking. But I'm like, no, I will put some modicum of effort into this. And then just to show you all the rest of us spent the entire time looking at Sonic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry we blasted your episode with Sonic Horn. <laughs> It's fun for the listeners. Play along at home. <laughs> Google Sonic Mpreg today. <laughs> Sonic Jesus the Hedgehog 8. came up with some fun, uh, Jesus the Hedgehog. Some fun uh, results. <laughs> so, Victor, um, was this how you thought this was going to go today? Um, you know, not really. <laughs> <laughs> how so? I, well, I guess I'm glad that everybody liked it. Uh, but, you know, there was a lot of Sonic drawings involved. <laughs> <laughs> and not as much talking about the album. But everybody seemed to like it, so I'll at least accept that. I mean, You've done good. I think it's uh, just a matter of, like... The order of like, hey, this is the first time we're having an artist rank their own album on the show, but it's also the same weekend that Sonic the Hedgehog opened in theaters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, on the one hand, hey, we all really liked your album and heaped praise on you, but on the other hand, we were all distracted by Sonic pictures. On the other hand, we're all just super into Sonic the Hedgehog porn. <laughs> no, I jack off really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's the thing, though. Like, we all really liked the album, so if we were just going to talk about the album more, it would just be saying, yeah, this part is also good. <laughs> so, I mean, you just kind of missed out on more praise for you. Or, but yeah, just concentrated. I, like... I received feet pictures, so <laughs> I think we all won today. So, yeah, Show Julia, feet. how did you feel about this ranking? I feel great. Uh, I was... Admittedly surprised at how high I'll take the rain was. <laughs> but I guess I shouldn't have been. Uh, other than that, though, I think this is a solid ranking. Yeah, I guess I was hoping I could convince everybody that Beach Ball's good, but but not nope. so. <laughs> you, you convinced me that you can do that song better than me. <laughs> Yeah, I felt bad that Beach Ball ended up coming down in my new ranking. I'm like, aw, oh. I know how much he likes this one. But, you know, when I when I compare it to just, like, how, how fun some of the other ones are to listen to, like, yeah, I can shake my butt to this. Beach Ball I couldn't really <laughs> shake my butt to. Shake your Beach Ball, as it were. Right. Whoa. hey yo. <laughs> But uh, so so Steve, you were the you were pretty surprised at how much you liked this album. I any, was, yeah. Any other just general comments on it? Uh, no, eh, not really. The rankings all over the place, but like you know, I, <laughs> I feel like like this is such a huge diversion from the original album that you know who knows what's gonna happen. Like, the what was on the original was clearly intended to be what. You know, what R.E.M. would have clearly intended to be singles and the strongest songs, when you add this much of a differentiation in production, you're just going to end up with something completely different. And, uh, Gavin, any last thoughts on this? Um, you know, I am often reminded of how much I dislike the original Reveal album. Um, <laughs> it came out in November of 2001. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, which, you know, at that particular point in American history, did, did anyone need that album? <laughs> Smash Cut 2020. It's a February <laughs> morning. <laughs> I put on my headphones and I pressed that play button on James Game Boy's re-reveal and I liked it. 
<laughs> and it, it, it is the kind of thing that we need at, at this particular point with where we are, how things are going. There's a song that the this album is movie out, we can finally move now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We as a nation have healed. Thank you, James Game Boy. Well, <laughs> thank you, James Game Boy. <laughs> thank you, Victor James. <laughs> Well, that is our episode. Excellent guess. Where can we find you on the internet? Julia. I am Lady Celery on Twitter. And that's it. And and <laughs> she's also Olivia on James Game Boy recordings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also was the really good singer. Everyone remember me as the really good singer from this album <laughs> and not as I am. <laughs> Gavin, where can people find you on the internet? Oh, just search for uh, Stinky the Hedgehog. I'll come up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I play drums in a band called Bent Knee. You know, find us on the Twitter, Bent Knee Music. Find us on the Instagram, Bent Knee Music. Find us on the Facebook, Bent Knee Music. Or you can go to bentkneemusic.com if you enjoy actual websites. Um, like some kind and, of nerd. Yeah, well, you know. And we'll be coming to a town possibly near you in April. I know I'll be in a town near Greg and Steve. Yep. Um, well, depending on oh, how I need far to Greg, let Greg goes know for that I'll be in Philly. Oh, yeah, this uh, episode you... might not come out until, like, after that tour's over. Oh, okay. Well, then, uh, maybe you saw me you. on tour. <laughs> <laughs> Get the sad applause drop. And Victor, where can people find you and this album? Um, you can find me at the Victastic K on Twitter, and you can find me. Um, I'm Lady Celery on Etsy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's true. Yeah. He makes art in my name, <laughs> sells it, but I gain all the profits. So. Um and uh. You can find James Game Boy on Spotify, Patreon, and Bandcamp. This album is currently only available on Bandcamp uh, because I don't want to pay. Currently, lessons. don't feel like paying a dollar a month for every song on this album to be on Spotify. Maybe someday I'll change my mind, but for now, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please go to my Bandcamp and listen to it. It's six minutes shorter than the original one. Good. <laughs> and Steve, where can people find us online? They can find us at LipstickGeneration.com and wherever they downloaded this podcast. And that's our episode. Bye, Internet. Bye. That was an episode. <laughs> that sure was Good an job, episode. Good job, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Lipstick Panel, hosted by Lipstick Generation. Lipstick Generation's music can be found on all major streaming platforms and at LipstickGeneration.com. If you're listening to the podcast on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Let us know your ranking of the subject in the comments down below. Feel free to leave us an episode suggestion also. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app, please leave a review and tell a friend about our show. Thanks and rock on!